6.30, and I'd like to call the public hearing on the school budget. Roll call, please. Ms. Cassianos? Present. Ms. Coppola? Present. Mr. Ford? Present. Ms. Gately? Present. Mr. Nicholson? Present. Ms. Sadaway? Present. Mayor McGee, absent. And can we all rise for a salute to the flag? Okay, open the public hearing for the two FY two thousand budget. And I'd like to ask if there are any is anyone here would like to speak in favor of the FY twenty budget? Is there anybody here who would like to speak in favor of the FY twenty budget? And again, is there anyone here who would like to speak in favor? of the FY20 budget. Okay, if not, then we will move on and I will ask, is there anybody here who would like to speak in opposition of the FY20 budget? Is there anybody here who would like to speak in opposition of the FY20 budget? And for the last time, I will ask, is there anyone here who would like to speak in opposition to the FY20 budget? If not, then um, could I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing of the FY20 budget. Second. Second. Okay. Roll call, Nancy. Ms. Cassianos? Yes. Ms. Capola? Yes. Ford? Yes. Ms. Gailey? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Saturday? Yes. Maybe Thank you. Absent. Okay. Who's in charge of the personnel subcommittee? Uh -huh. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Let's do it. Okay, we're going to move right into the personnel subcommittee meeting and a committee of the whole meeting for June 27, 2019. Roll call, Nancy. Ms. Capola, Chair? Present. Ms. Gately? Present. Hey, Mr. Sadway? Present. Observing is Ms. Cassianos, Mr. Ford, uh, Mr. Nicholson. Observing. Is this a committee of the whole meeting? This is this uh, personnel subcommittee so first. And, the and committee of the whole. Yeah. Yeah. So shouldn't we all be in attendance to the committee of the whole? Yep, you are. You're sitting at the table, so you're in attendance. Right? Present. <laughs> okay. Um, the on-the-job postings will start with a mm. assistant director of English learner education. Um, attorney Sadaway, saw your hand up. Thank you. Um, I, prior to uh, the meeting, um, we did receive the um, draft versions with the corrections that we suggested at the last meeting last week. Um, I went over the um, uh, changes that we've requested and with regards to um, this particular uh, post in which is the assistant director of ELE, um, the changes were um, made, and uh, I don't see any other issues. Yes, Skately. Um, <clears throat> last week we met here and we went over these positions, and even though I know that they're all necessary and I think they would enhance. Um, I was very um, inundated with phone calls and people talking to me after um, Gayla Crowley's um, article in the item, and they were like, why are you spending $300,000 on new staff in the administration building 
when we do not have our teacher raises, we do not have this, we do not have that. Um, clerks, <coughs> so it's, and I talked with Dr. Tutwiler about this, and I told him it would be a very difficult thing for me today to make a decision on these jobs. And what I am going to request of Dr. Tutwiler next year is that we get these jobs in April, you know, so we can look them over, we can hear from our constituents, we can see, you know, your reasoning why we need these jobs. I understand why we need these jobs. But my concern is that it's a lot of money when you think you add them up and you add all their other things that go along with it, their longevity and everything, we're asking for, you're asking me for $300,000 in three positions. And that's a lot of money, and I know it's n necessary, but I think every teacher, and I also wanted to have the class sizes for secondary, which I understand we can't get right now, and that is because a lot of the teachers in secondary are having class sizes of 35 times five in some cases in the high school. They would love to have teacher assistants. You know what I mean? They would love to have someone else in that classroom and help them manage those 35 students. So that's where I am on this, and my decision will be based on how appropriate I think or how much we need this. So some of the positions, Dr. Tabwila, I may say yes, and some of them I may say no, because could we go a year without that and try to put it in next year? That's where I'm coming from. Attorney Satterwhite. Uh, I think that we should focus on each position as a presented uh, and the agenda. Uh, for this one, for the Assistant Director of English Le uh, Learner Education, uh, we're creating this position mainly to stay compliant with the Look Act. Yes. Would you say? Mm -hmm. um, is there anyone else in this department that can uh, be sure that uh, the Look Act is uh, implemented and compliant? Uh, that's a good question. So right now you have to bear in mind that the Office of English Learner Education is a team of three uh, responsible for when you include the um, students who have, who have exited um, mm -hmm. identification as an English learner, you're talking almost half of the student body in the Lynn Public Schools. And just because a student has exited, there are still compliance uh, procedures that we're required to engage, and those are changing. So somebody's got to lead that effort. Someone's going to need to train people, especially as a new um, E elevation program comes into place as we're looking to expand um, what I would call an equity initiative when we uh, implement uh, a, a two-way immersion program at uh, Harrington fall 20 fall 2020 um, these are heavy heavy lifts and right now for a team of three um, I, I'm amazed at what they're able to get done given the team being the size that it is and the fact that part of this position um, will uh, be assisting in the writing of federal grants that would bring that potentially could bring money back to the district and enhance the classroom experience. That's that's correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Attorney Nicholson. Thank you, <clears throat> and you know I I, I thank Ms. Gailey for for raising this because I think it's a it's an important lens to view uh, our our budget and particularly with new positions uh, is to the impact that we're having directly on students and, and what's student facing. Um, when I, so one of the, the, one of the documents we, we went through when we did the budget was that list of new positions that, that Kevin had put together. And one of the things I had, had done when looking in that is thinking about what, what, which of those positions are, are, are student facing in, in the classroom or interacting directly with students. And, and the number I had and running it by Kevin was, was close to 90%, uh, which I think is, a good sign of where our priorities are. Um, and so I think, uh, you know, while we have to specifically approve these new positions because they're coming before us, the vast majority of positions that we're adding in this budget are, are directly facing and interacting with students. So I think that's a, just a, to sort of a, as context as, as we're thinking about this. Uh, I thought that was helpful for me as I thought about it. Thank you. Yes, Attorney Sandler. Um I make a motion <clears throat> uh, to approve the job uh, posting for Assistant Director of English Learning Education as 
uh, presented in the draft uh, before us. Second. Move forward to the full committee. And move Second. forward to the full committee, correct. Second. 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 <laughs> She's seconded. <laughs> okay, roll call please, Ms. Nancy. Cola? Yes. Ms. Gailey? Yes. And Mr. Sadaway? Yes. Okay. Next one um, is Assistant Director of Social Emotional Learning. <clears throat> Donna? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. Attorney. Sorry. Sadaway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, I, I went over this uh, job posting as um, amended uh, at a request from the last meeting. Um, and uh, one of the things that we wanted to do was add uh, the, the secondary uh, language would be um, preferred, which I believe it has been in, uh, at the request of uh, Ms. Gately uh, to, to also include Google. And then we wanted also to uh, state in paragraph 10 that they'll collaborate and actively pursue uh, <coughs> grants. And if you look in number 10, they switched it around, but the wording is exactly what we requested. Um, this uh, position, Dr. Tutwiler, uh, um, I'm, I'm assuming is, um, it's not necessarily creating a new role, it's just correcting the role that was uh, before us, correct? Th that is correct. Um, so should you uh, approve this position, um, we will close the program specialist for parent and family engagement uh, and post the position that we're discussing right now uh, for a difference of- 6,000, you said? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, but for the wording, um, mm -hmm. everything is, 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 is in place based off of our last meeting from last week. Are there any other questions? Is there somebody who would make a motion, attorney? I make a motion uh, to approve the uh, posting for the assistant director of SEL for student support and family uh, community engagement to send it to the full committee. Second. Roll call, please, Nancy. Ms. Capola? Yes. Ms. Gailey? Yes. Ms. Sadway? Yes. Okay. The next one is the program specialist, special education out of district. <coughs> yes, attorney. Uh, this one we had um, requested uh, substantial uh, edits to, um, and we received a, a copy of it um, with the changes, um, which unfortunately one part of it and I think is important, I uh, didn't make it to the draft that's before us. So if this is brought forward, I would ask that this word be put back into the document. It's paragraph one underneath the performance responsibilities. We wanted the person to also monitor. So it would have been coordinate and monitor all at, uh, special education delivery services for students and out of district placements during the school year and summer months. Um, I did have a moment to talk to the Dr. Totweiler about that and he's in agreement that that word should be in there. Um, and he's fine with it, and if we do put it forward, we can uh, re request that that uh, edit be made prior to posting. Am I, cor is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Are there any other questions on this? And, sorry. Mm -hmm. And just a, a question, just uh, obviously for our constituents that think, uh, that may believe that this isn't really helpful for the direct uh, placements of, of students, but um, for this one, uh, there's only uh, so many numbers of students that are out of district. Was it uh, 45 placements, 100 and? 183 students, 45 uh, separate placements. And the, the goal is to make sure that these students are <laughs> receiving the accommodations that they need, but at the same time, seeing if we can uh, alter our curriculum or our services to then bring them back into the district. Yeah. And, and that would help us with our budget, correct, and allow for us to free up money to hire people. That, that, that is correct. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yep. Yep. That is correct. Ms. So, Gately? So am I correct to understand as more and more people are coming into our district and not out of district, then this job would probably fade hey. into the wind? Um, Closed. I mean, I, I, I don't know if that is 
that line of linear line of thinking would be accurate. I mean, it makes sense. You're saying would they work themselves out of a job essentially? Um, I guess if if they're out looking out a district where I thought us all of us were hoping that we move more and more students in yeah. district. Yep. Yeah. And as that dwindles, then yeah. it wouldn't be a reason to have this job. Not True. that this person wouldn't be allowed to work with us any longer. True. They could do something, something else. else. So. so I'd say from a high level, in most positions in, in the district, if there, if there isn't a need for it, then either we alter it or, yeah. or, or we close it. Okay. Um, so sure. That's all I wanted to know. There's yeah. a possibility of closing it. Yes, Mr. Castellanos. And just to, you know, kind of piggyback off that, like, the, so the mental, so we got, so for out of district placements, your, your students are impacted by poverty, mental health issues, uh, very court involved. So a lot of those kids that we, we have out of district um, are protected by law as well. So you have the mm -hmm. DOE has certain statutes. Um, the out of district person, uh, is a good lens to have, especially when you have uh, district of origin. Mm -hmm. So if we got a, if 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 a, if a student be, if becomes homeless or placed in a group home or in an, on a, another city, they have by by law the mm -hmm. district of origin has to be um, responsible. You have to comply, sure. and that's sure. throughout the the state of Massachusetts. So it's kind of it's a it's a good position. I work directly with this with these folk every day, and it's a very good lens because sometimes. If you don't know what you're doing and you don't advocate with other state agencies, you can. That's a big cost. That could, you know, it's a very, it's a big number that actually they protect us from, from falling in those traps. And you can see it happening every day when you work in uh, those heavy caseloads, and especially when you want to protect them, um, you want equity. And a lot of these kids are um, uh, they're tied into IEPs, and it's good to, to have that position. So appreciate the work done on that. So. And um, <coughs> when last week when we were here, one of the things that we had discussed was paragraph 13, which um, we asked that they uh, change the language, uh, which they did, um, where it didn't specify in district teachers. Remember, it was um, mm -hmm. we, we assumed that it was the out of district teachers that we have no power over. Um, but if you look at that, the future for this job is to make sure that the transition of these students. Is, is also done in, a, in an orderly fashion with with the continued um, supervision and direction. Um, so I, I see. I don't see in the next unless we get uh, forty seven million dollars from the state. <laughs> I don't see us being able to afford to make uh, these uh, these uh, these changes in a, in a as quick fashion, unfortunately. But um, the wording is there for for the job as it currently is and what it may look like in the future. Yeah. Um, can I make a motion, or unless anyone else has questions? Yeah. Do you have any questions? I think just when you, just to piggyback on what you were saying, uh, you know, at this time, we have a space problem. So the thoughts of bringing, you know, a, a number of these back would be a problem for us at this time. 180, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Look for a motion then. I make a, I make a motion uh, to uh, accept uh, the program specialist for special education out of district with the edit to paragraph one under performance responsibilities uh, to state coordinate and monitor all special education delivery services for students in out of district placements during the school year and summer months. Uh, with that edit, uh, the permission uh, to move forward with that and also to bring it to the um, full committee. Second. Roll call, Nancy. Ms. Capola? Yes. Ms. Gately? Yes. Ms. Sadoway? Yes. Okay. And the last one is payroll, accounts payable. Manager. Okay. My agenda is missing an A, but that's okay. We knew what you meant. <laughs> um, we didn't have any discussion because of the title that was on there last week, so um, maybe at this time. Does it? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Does it make a difference? That, that it's just says pay, payroll super, uh, supervisor, but on the um, posting it says payroll account payable manager. Uh, I think he's got a question. Can you repeat that? Does it make a difference that the agenda says payroll supervisor and then the posting says. Oh, sorry. I take that back. 
This is the new one. Yes, so it is properly, um, it just, it's, it's misspelled. I guess that's not an issue. Okay. It says manger. <laughs> oh, way in a manger. Um, are we going to have anyone talk about it? As you're aware, um, you know, there are only two of us that in the finance department that uh, run the whole finance department. There's a grants manager and myself for the only two people. So hopefully next year we'll be uh, overseeing a large budget and over $20 million in grants. Within this, we've done a conversion over the last year to uh, the new Immunis module, and it's really requiring someone to really, most of this job, even though I put it down as um, accounts payable, because there will be some oversight, but I didn't want to just put it just straight payroll because of the two departments somewhat work hand in hand. But this person, the majority of their experience will be working with our Immunis system and payroll, because right now our goal is to really encumber payroll, which we don't do. We just pay it weekly, and there's a lot of uh, new people in the payroll office that have only probably, uh, I'd say, five years or less experience in working with Munis. So we need someone to be able to run reports and do a lot of the day-to-day uh, -day oversight of the uh, uh, payroll. We pay over 2,000 people every week here, which is a lot of people in my first job I always say is payroll is probably the most important thing we do here and you, we have the teachers union here I'm sure they would be the first to call me if there were people not being paid correctly so this focus is every week we run batches and other batches have to be reviewed for accuracy and everything else so what I felt is um, it's because it's really a burden on us to kind of manage this and it's just so it's a very big system and like I say we have two people that are from a managerial standpoint that oversee all the finances for this district and I, I am requesting that we have this person majority of their work will be reporting to me on a weekly basis and reviewing the payroll so it takes a little bit of a burden that I can do other things too because there's other things we need to be doing as well so that's the pretty much an overview why I feel this is important uh, years ago we used to um, have a higher level job but that person retired, and at the same time, we were laying people off. And I said, it's not good at that point to fill a job when we were actually uh, having a reduction in the workforce. So, you know, I've just been managing it, but I think it's time now uh, with our new conversion that we get somebody to help assist and run the reports and do the updates and all the things that have to be done in the system uh, uh, at this point. So I respectfully ask that we get this, we approve this. Thank you. Any questions, I can answer them. Journey said, wait. Thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, you know, it's every position that has been presented to us just this last uh, time around has seemed very, pretty vital uh, to the organization. Uh, this one, um, it, it, you're right, people want to get paid. They want to get paid the right amount on the right, right day. So that's extremely important. When, when did the reduction take place? How many years ago for when uh, the position was eliminated? Probably 2009. So 10 years? Yeah. So for the past 10 years, it's been uh, you and the finance manager doing this position? No, the, fi the grants manager. Actually, the grants manager doesn't oversee the payroll, so I've been overseeing it uh, directly. And uh, do you have a group of people in the department that, that, that prepare the payroll? Or is it just the two people? Yes, we've had a lot of turnover. Uh, we've had retirees. When I got here, I had a you know really a good veteran staff, but we were using a different system at the time as well. Uh, we, the city converted to the new Munis uh, citywide, I'd say a little over a year and a half ago, and um, it has a, it's a very it's a really good system, but it has a lot of features, and uh, you know you really need a lot of time on a day-to-day -day basis to go in and really work on this system and I can't spend every day on this system is really the issue to go through them all so I just want to ensure that I have someone to oversee that uh, because to me it's important and, and we know that we have teachers constantly uh, we haven't even filled all the teaching jobs because of bumping and bidding and then there are going to be people that left and there's new teachers so there's a lot of hand touching of people in the system and it has to be done accurately and correctly as well as, as, as Ms. Gailey mentioned, like there's longevity, there's step increases, there's all these other items that have to be done. So uh, I feel it's time that we have someone spend a lot of time on it because I think everyone in the office except for one person has five years or less experience on the system, you know, even in payroll, never mind this new system as well. Thank you. Any 
other questions? Yes, Skately. Um, when I opened up the mic and talked earlier, I talked about the, you know, calls that I got and the concern with monies. So on this one, I think we could wait till next year to do this. I think that if they have been in the office and working, that they should be able to do the job continuously and do it well. Um, I just, that's how I feel about it, so. The, um, just a question under finance, the under <laughs> payroll, why would you be reducing one payroll um, employee? I was using that, that as an offset to pay for this position because this person would supervise all the people in that department. Those people just data entering with the new MUNA system, there's more that's being imported electronically uh, through the system, so there's not as much paperwork that filters through the department. So it's gone from more of a paperwork department to more of a computer entry and managing mm -hmm. tables and software systems with reports within the system. So that's why I feel that this is a, would be a position of a supervisory position of over that department versus just a payroll person. Uh, we had you know somebody leave and I just didn't fill the job with the new system because we're able to still get everything in but it's the day-to-day -day operation and, and it wouldn't be the responsibility of a payroll person that would enter payroll to be overseeing all the uh, systems that we're utilizing. So this cost would be probably I would say mm, probably cost the net would probably be about maybe $20,000. And I think you answered this before, but okay, it's it's we're cutting one payroll person, and we're always also cutting one clerical. I think you explained that. Yes, before, that was the uh, the person um, the person that when that job that person uh, when we didn't fill the person they were there pretty much their direct secretary, so we left that person in place. And then when the uh, accounts uh, the accounts receivable or the accounts uh, payable department person retired. The person moved that had that position moved into that, and some of those jobs were kind of absorbed within that as well as through the new MUNA system. So, again, a lot of the paperwork that we do on a day to basis is a lot less because it's more of it's computerized now. Uh, all the uh, purchase orders are all completely done through MUNIS. Uh, the only thing we're uploading would be, uh, you know, three quotes and some W 9s and things of that nature are scanned and sent into the system. So. A lot of that other work has disappeared, and I merged that with that position. <coughs> so if we actually counted the two positions of a reduction, it actually this would be saving us money by doing this. Is the question? Yes, Attorney Sam. Um, why in this rule, uh, unlike the other rules that were presented today, does it say that the individual will report to the school business administrator, but then in paragraph 10 it says that they're also going to report to the deputy superintendent and the superintendent R with regards to performing any and all duties at the request of uh, those. Well, we've always shared responsibilities. It's kind of just a crossover. Sometimes there's some requests, and as the deputies have a question, they can go right to them and ask a question. So, I mean, you know, same with the grants manager. If there's a question, because some of them oversee the, uh, the title grants, they would go in and deal with the person. So if they were dealing on the salaries, or some people, because even though they're in grants, they would still, the salary still got to go through the payroll system, so they would have some interaction with them. So it's, it, this is kind of, is this pulled from the grants manager or kind of similar to it? No, the grants manager oversees the $20 million from a higher level. This person actually would be overseeing the payroll of the grants, because mm -hmm. the payroll of the grants is not done by the grants manager. It's done, all the payroll is done by a payroll department and it's all processed through our MUNA system. So it's just a matter of how they're charged off in managing that they're charged to the right account. In our budget, where, where it shows you if it's coming out of the budget or from a grant and it gives you that? Okay. That's right, so it's Title I or Title SPED 240, those where they're charging off. Thank you. Are there any other questions at this time? No. Okay. That is no other questions for me. None. Any motion to be made or is it just to be tabled? Um table. 
there a second on the table? I, I don't know if um, table on it is, is appropriate. So I, I would I, you know, it, it's been 10 years in this position. It sounds like an important role. Um, you know, Donna, it's, you've been on the committee for a long time. I'm not sure if you have um, any thoughts with regards to it not being filled for 10 years or if this, um, I'll be okay. I can go after you. Okay, let me answer his question. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, I've never ha had anybody call that they haven't been paid or whatever. And I'm uh, that uh, that that's just the answer in your question. But I certainly will let you know the superintendent. Well, the, the direct deposit issue I don't think had to do with the payroll manager. No, no but I, I no, but I said I said no, no, I, no, never I was had. talking to John. Sorry. Oh, okay, sorry about that. All right. Um, so I, I I just I think I. Uh, want to address um, what Mrs. Gately was saying at the beginning around um, concern about um, positions being proposed that don't necessarily aren't direct service to students' positions. Uh, I guess I would go back to what Attorney uh, Nicholson said about the overwhelming percentage of uh, the proposed positions in this budget being, uh, to use his language, student facing, or I would say direct service, 90%. Um, so I, I think that one reflects values, um, two um, really suggests that you know this is not a, a major move with these positions, but we have to build capacity. So this is the first time uh, in a long time that this district has seen an increase as large as we saw, and we really need to take advantage of that, both in addressing students' needs directly, which we did with that 90%, but then also building capacity so that the folks who are doing the direct service are also supported in doing that work. And that's everything from being paid appropriately and on time and not having mistakes in, in that finance department um, to support in the classroom you know, through training and, and feedback and things of that nature. So I just wanted to put that out there, that, that you have to, there has to be a balanced approach. And I think we're really addressing the direct service um, shortages with this budget, but also trying to take some steps forward in building capacity. Donna? And, and yes. um, my, my biggest thing is I want to see the problem, and then I want to see the solution. And I think that um, what uh, Kevin had said in the beginning was, you know, that this this is all on him and 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 someone else within the department, and it's 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 been a lot, and it's taken him away from other things that he should be doing or could be doing in a in a a better way, um, and I think that uh, over the past year with him working uh, with regards to our issues with the students and the food, we see that when he's involved with something that is under his purview as well in a in an increased manner that we see results so i i have no no issues with this um with this position just based off of the, his actions throughout the year and what we can see uh, that, that he's able to do if, if he if he is given the ability to do so so i make a motion um to accept the the position and uh put, push it towards the um uh whole committee Okay, do I hear a second? Okay. Um, <laughs> it's not time for discussion, but uh, I'll make a second so that I can have discussion. What we have been in, we have already talked about it at the last meeting, is um, many of the clerk's jobs have been cut. And that is a huge concern. And it's left, like, one particular school very short-handed without the clerk. And so, it, I'm, you know, for myself, I'm seeing clerk jobs being taken away to put in management jobs. 
and it concerns me. So I just, you know, I would like to, you know, I mean, if if it's if it's necessary, it's necessary. But also, you know, so aren't the clerical jobs that we have been cutting. So what do we do in that case? Are you recommending that we restore uh, a particular position so yeah, well, that it's balanced? Yeah, I can't really do it at probably at this time. Uh, I mean, he's balancing. You know, he, he's saying that there's no use for the, one of those jobs in his, but I'm talking about across the whole system, mm -hmm. the clerical. And, you know, I don't know, but I know I have had a lot of calls. And Lorraine mm -hmm. has had a lot, a lot of calls in Me regards too. to particular jobs that we're cutting out there mm -hmm. that we know it doesn't make sense to have cut them, you know. And, and it's adding a management job, but... Can you understand? I I, I understand. We're getting the calls I, I for do. that. And I do. I understand well your as, yeah. your perspective. Um, respectfully, um, you know, we we entrust building leaders to make to know their buildings well and to make decisions that they think are in the best interest of children first and foremost, and the operation and the goals that they're trying to accomplish. Uh, and I I. I I, I'm, I'm having trouble embracing the idea that it doesn't make sense um, because this is a professional opinion about an operation. Um, but I can also hear the argument that uh, it feels unbalanced if there are positions being proposed and, and others being closed. Right. I, you know, this being my you first know, time. You know, I mean, we're this. just taking, you know, we're taking two middle schools that pretty much have equal number of students in the 1400 range. And, you know, one middle school is going to operate with three clerks, and another one is being cut and only operating with two. Mm -hmm. And I truly understand mm -hmm. the principal wanting, you know, uh, something that's going to make her <coughs> operation better. Mm -hmm. But to take it out on the back of the clerks, you know, as we're, we're changing, and I'm, I can't remember at this time whether that was adding a management job at that school. I'm really not sure, uh, but I'd have to look back if you you guys could probably yeah. There, that better at, for at me that particular school, there were uh, well, there were a couple of shifts um, to create three department head positions, which are part management or supervi supervisory, mm -hmm. and part teaching. Um, so department head say. You know, and I, I'm not saying that it's not a problem. I'm just saying that it just seems like we're taking it all out on the back of the clerks to add management jobs into the budget. Um, you know, I can honestly say Kevin works diligently sure. and he does a phenomenal job, and that's why we never have calls about payroll or anything like that. We never, never, never have a problem. Um, and if he's saying that, you know, he's taxed to the to the limit, and you know he has inexperience in the payroll department, you know, um, that's probably a possibility that it has to happen. I don't even remember the job if, if it was ten years ago. It was the, it was a higher level job. It was uh, over a hundred thousand dollars job. Um, it, I mean, it was Danny Horahan's job. I mean, you remember Daniel Horahan, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that was the position. So, uh, I'm, as I always told you, I try to be fiscal responsible here. That's my job. Okay. My job is to spend the taxpayers' money wisely, and I think that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. Um, you know, you don't hear about problems, but we fix them. Um, there are things I have to fix them, but to spend a lot of time fixing things takes me away from other job functions, and I appreciate the uh, comment on the food, but that's time, and, you know, there are other responsibilities that I'm responsible for, and... Uh, I need to be doing those as well as we, you know, continue to balance the budget every year. And I always say this week, these last two weeks are probably the most stressful time of the year for me because mm -hmm. everything's closing down and I have to make sure uh, things are done properly. And I've, I've always worked whatever it takes to get the job done, but I, 
I have managed, and I, I respectfully ask for this position because I believe it's needed. I wouldn't ask, and I started by saying $159 million budget, and there's two people financially that run this whole system. That's, I think if we were to do a study on other districts, you'd find a lot more people are in a central office. Uh, if you recall the tale of four cities that we all went to down in Malden, I believe we're seven million dollars underfunded on uh, what we should be on administration, and there was a number of positions, but I think it came up to almost seven million dollars. So um, I know it's. I've been doing this in three districts, 20 years now, and in three years it always. And as you well know, I was on a school committee, so it, it is tough to add administrative jobs because people always say put a direct services to students, put direct services to students. And as Jared said, yeah, I did confirm. Yeah, we're about 90 percent of this budget new positions are going towards students. So. Um, I, I, I think I'd ask you to take that all into context here is about what we're trying to ask for. I don't, I've been here, you know, 12, just about 12 years and I've never asked, I've managed to do it, but we're at a point where we, we, you know, we've got a lot to do and there's a lot to keep moving forward and, you know, I don't want to come here and say this person's making mistakes. That's my job is to fix them and make sure and, you know, correct whatever needs to be corrected. But I think we're at that crossroads where I'm really asking for some assistance to help run financially the system the right way it needs to be and I hopefully respect that you take that into consideration when you make your vote. Thank you. Yes, Superintendent. Uh, I can just add, um, I just confirmed with Attorney My House, um, in the new business vote to approve the FY20 budget, um, there, the committee can make a recommendation that we yeah. restore a position. Mm -hmm. I think all of us know that at the table, so Good. we'll try to Just do that. Pointing that out. Do the best. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There are no other questions. Um, roll call, Nancy, on that motion. Uh, Ms. Capola? Yes. Yes. Ms. Gately? No. No. Mr. Uh, Sadoy? Yes. Yes. Passed. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. For citizens to express their views on to have the committee understand numerous points of view. Directed at a school committee member or a member. Late right now. And if you can, um, is there anybody who's signing up?
Committee on June 27, 2019 to order. Roll call, please. Mr. Cassianos? Present. Mr. Capola? Present. Mr. Ford? Absent? Absent. Ms. Gately? Present. Mr. Nicholson? Present. Mr. Sadoway? Present. Mayor McGee, absent. Can you please rise and for a salute to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You can please remain standing for a moment of silence. Um, and if you. So uh, we have a, re a research, Delva, he was a United States Army, Link Classical 2018, uh, recently passed, so please stand for a moment of silence. Thank you for your service. Here. Start with the adoption of the minutes of the meeting, uh, committee of the whole meeting on June 13, 2019. Yes. I make a motion uh, to accept the um, minutes for the committee of the whole meeting on June 13th of 2019. Second. Does that need to be a roll call, Nancy, or just a um, roll call, please? For just that meeting? I can do them all. Yeah, One, okay. do them all, then, I, and then I we'll also do a make roll a call. Okay. A mo uh, I'm going to amend my motion <laughs> to also include the curriculum subcommittee meeting on June 13th, 2019. In the 11th regular meeting on June 13th, 2019, and the 11th regular meeting executive session on June 13th, 2019. Okay, second. Okay, roll call, please. Ms. Cassianos? Yes. Ms. Capola? Yes. Ms. Ford? Absent. Ms. Gately? Yes. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Mr. Sadaway? Yes. Mayor McGee? Absent. Next is appointments and election. Superintendent? Yep, and there's one. Um, this evening, I'm happy to. Uh, announced that uh, Ms. Carrie Hayward has been uh, selected as the vice principal uh, at LVTI uh, and the person who will lead the new Discovery Academy. Uh, I will say that uh, when I was a deputy uh, superintendent, uh, Marshall Middle was one of my partner schools, so I had an opportunity to see up close and personal Ms. Hayward's work, and it was stellar in every way. Uh, and I'll also tell you um, that there was a really strong applicant pool uh, and Ms. Hayward just dazzled, dazzled them. Um, so we're really, really happy um, to see her take this Discovery Academy to the places we know it can go. Mrs. Hayward, would you like to come up to say a few words? Okay, at the microphone. So your dad can watch you out there. Yes. <laughs> Rotary events. Oh, okay. More important than me tonight. That's okay. <gasps> yeah. I just want to extend my thanks to everybody for the opportunity. Um, I'm thrilled to be able to join the administrative team at Lynn Tech and to work with the district to really get this program up and running. Um, and I look forward to continuing to work with you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Congratulations. Congrats. Say one thing. <laughs> Carrie. Carrie. I have to say one thing. She was basketball player of mine, Dr. Tutwiler, and she was excellent. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, very good. Nice. Okay, next will be a presentation from Salem State Collaborative, Jim Kearns. If you would like to come up. If you have anybody with you, yes. Just, yes. Okay, if we can just slide a chair up then and, and use the microphone because um, this goes out over the cable network. And this is Jim Tolizzi. Um, I'm the executive director of the collaborative, and Jim is the finance director who was there, I believe, when the collaborative was founded at Salem State in 1983. Mm. And was founded by Professor um, Frank Sullivan. And at the time, it was when Eisenhower money was flooding into the state and actually all over the country. And it was created for math and science uh, education for teachers and the support for that. In 2003, um, I took over the collaborative, and we've expanded into pretty much all content areas, and um, and a push in technology. Um, each year we change. Um, one of the documents that you have in there is our flyer that we use to uh, solicit grants. But within that flyer, you'll notice we have the Wise program. Lynn is an, an active, well, up until this year, was an active member participating in the WISE program. 10 to 15 girls from uh, each 
junior high school are allowed to attend. Um, we have an Audubon uh, workshop series that we're from Ireland um, where uh, teachers uh, can use their school yard as a science lab. Mm -hmm. And it cuts down on supplies. There's a lot of picture book reading and a lot of connections into the classroom and the curriculum. Um, you'll also see the AP Calculus, Statistics, Biology, and Chemistry practice exam. Lynn was an active member um, in those programs up until three years ago, and I believe um, I was told that they're now doing that within the, yeah. the school system, but they were very active uh, within that. Um, the program used to be just after school. Teachers' needs have changed over the years, and it's now after school, Saturdays, April, February vacations, and the summer. We just finished our summer institute today. Uh, over the last two days, we had over 120, uh, 130 teachers participating in workshops, some from Lynn. Um, you'll also notice uh, in that document that the, the cost for membership, there's two types of membership. One membership is basic, and that's 80 cents per student. If you want to take a hazard of a guess what the fee was in 1983, it was 80 cents per student. We have not raised the fee since 1983. The only change um, in our membership status has been we've added a $1,000 fee for the teachers to attend most of the workshops at no cost. Now, <coughs> for Lynn, that um, being the largest school system, we actually, when I took over as collaborative uh, executive director, I sort of made an executive uh, decision that I actually lowered Lynn's fee. And um, the premium fee, which would have cost, I think right now you're at about 15,000 students, that would have been $12,000 plus $1,000. It would have been a $13,000 cost. Um, we charged Lynn $10,000. And then wherever there was a fee for a course, Lynn teachers were free. So for the last four years, Lynn teachers have not paid a penny for a workshop, where other teachers are paying $25 and, uh, well, $5 or $25, depending on what the courses were. And you'll see the fee structure on one of the, the colored documents <coughs> towards the back, um, membership benefits. So wherever there was a fee there, Lynn teachers were not paying that fee. That was given. I was, uh, we informed those teachers that Lynn paid for that and they were able to attend those workshops at no charge. So uh, the membership for the collaborative, um, you'll see it. We pretty much have every parochial school in the North Shore and most school systems on the North Shore uh, within the membership. Questions were raised about the number of uh, workshops that we offer and what base they are. Sorry. This past year, 2018, 2019, you have a document that shows 110 or 115 workshops that we offered uh, this past year. Those workshops average between two to f two hours, up to 15 hours. Our online classes are 15 hours. They're hybrid. And the hybrid online class has one face-to-face -face meeting. We found that we needed to do the face-to-face -face meeting for teachers to get comfortable with the platform. They go through the first lesson and as Kathy indicated, there is a lot of work. I get a lot of calls asking for, okay, since I had to do all this work, can I get graduate credit for this? Um, and what we don't offer uh, is graduate credit. There was also a question in terms of, are we a member of Salem State? We have been an agency of Salem State since 1983. Our workshops and our program is not listed on the uh, Salem State um, website because they require for us to have our workshops up there that we need to post those workshops close to six months in advance. And I have teachers uh, submitting workshops to me three weeks out from running the workshop. It would not work. And so Salem State has allowed us to have our own website and we work through that. There are 93 presenters now working for the collaborative and their classroom teach most of them are classroom teachers. I have about three or four retirees. Um, and 
they're evaluated um, after they do their presentations. And unless they get a straight five out of five and positive comments, they're not retired re for any other further workshops. So the key end for the collaborative has been low cost, high quality professional workshops um, taught by classroom teachers. They're asked to teach, offer a program of something that works within their classroom that they love doing and they f their students have found success with. And that's been our model. We do not have a lot of overhead. Most of our uh, expenses go towards paying the presenters. We receive all the financial support from Salem State in terms of they handle all of our payroll, they handle all of our deposits, they handle all of our accounting at no charge. We give Jim a desk. Fortunately, it used to be in a closet, a closet in a closet in a classroom. Mm -hmm. He now has a desk in an office area but there's one desk there that um, Jim can call home. I work out of my office at home. The schools that we have as training sites uh, provide us those training sites at no charge. We do not pay custodial fees. So when you look at our overhead, we have two retired department heads earning a stipend that's a shade better than our department head salary. Uh, there are no full-time employees. And over this past year, I think I totaled it out today, we had $78,000 that went out to presenters' cost uh, for presenters' fees. So that's where we're able to keep the cost down and provide the services that we provide and also being able to go 36 years without raising our fees. Other questions? The, oh, sorry. And just one, one last thing. Um, Lynn participation. A few years ago, I was asked to give a list of participants. Um, what I gave was a list of registrations. And it did have a lot of people that did not show up for workshops. There were over 300 and some odd names. Lynn has, Lynn, up until this year, had the highest number of registrants every year for the past seven or eight years. Lynn also has the highest number of no-shows. Our old system made it very difficult to call through and eliminate the no-shows from our processing list. Our current system does, uh, is able to do that, and it's a much more accurate. And so one of the documents in there are the Lynn participants um, from uh, the Summer Institute of uh, 2017 through last year, through last summer, or the beginning of last summer. And there were about 220 participants and then there's a little document a, a page or so in the end of teachers from Lynn that participated after you dropped out after you dropped out and after I met with Dr. Taltweiler earlier in the fall and I allowed those teachers to attend the workshops even though they were not members at no charge um, and where you see 15 hours beside the the workshop name of the, the participant those are the courses that address the special ed and the ESL requirements for recertification. You'll also see some at 67 and a half. Those are the SEI endorsement classes that your teachers took. All the workshop descriptions are on our website now, so you can actually take a look at each one of these workshops on our website um, in their descriptions. Open to questions. Thank you. Yes, Attorney Satterwhite. Uh, I appreciate the um, time that you took to come and speak to us about this um, important collaborative and what it has to offer and what it has offered and what you've done for us in the past. Um, it shouldn't go unnoticed. Um, obviously, uh, you giving free courses um, and reducing the price is, is greatly appreciative. Um, so I, I, I want to say thank you for that. Uh, one of the things that I... I did like to receive from you today was the collaborative membership and I just thought you know this is a Salem State uh, co uh, collaborative you're in Salem so my my first thought was to look around the neighboring towns and cities to see if they're members and they are you have Peabody you have Salem you have um, Marblehead you have all the the bordering um, uh, cities and towns as members which is which, which is good obviously you want to be a part of something that you can get to 
for classes, make it convenient for your uh, educators to, to, to do that as well. But then I, I saw that you, you actually go, people from Everett come. Um, then you have people um, in Melrose also come into the collaborative, and that's, that's, that's good as, as well. Um, is, is that what your, your core is, to get to the areas that are close to Salem State? Is, was that where the idea came from, and that's where you're, you're sticking to? Or, you know, because what the administration is saying is, hey, we're the biggest school district. Well, we're the biggest school district closest to Salem, <laughs> so that makes sense. But we don't have a Worcester because uh, are you not trying to get Worcester to be a part of the collaboration? We're retired. I've been asked by the Archdiocese of Boston to provide professional development west of Boston, Boston, and south of Boston. And I just said, I'm getting a part-time salary, and I'm retired. We handle the North Shore. <laughs> and we're very comfortable handling the North Shore. We're able to do this with teachers within the North Shore. Expanding beyond this, there are other collaboratives. They charge a lot more. If you were a member of EDCO, you'd be paying. Some of my presenters work for EDCO, and they're being paid almost $350 an hour. Wow. I'm paying that same presenter $95 an hour because they like our program. And so we're able to charge much less um, for the workshops. So we just want to concentrate on the North Shore and only work within the North Shore. We do not want to expand um, beyond what we're capable of doing. We did uh, our training sites we, in order to help Lynn. Um, we uh, use the Higgins School now in Peabody as one of our training sites. So we have two, two systems, Linfield uh, High School and the Higgins School that were, we thought were beneficial for Lynn teachers to, uh, to get to. In the past, uh, it hasn't happened uh, this past year or two, uh, uh, we used to offer some workshops within Lynn with our presenters, but limited only to Lynn teachers. Mm. Um, but we, uh, we were told that we would have to pay custodial fees if we offered other workshops in Lynn, and that breaks our financial structure. It doesn't work for us. Mr. Castellanos. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I really appreciate you coming in and really, you know, obviously providing us with all these materials. Uh, I also want to just point out um, we heard an open mic. Uh, we heard some really strong testimony on, you know, the benefits of, you know, attending the Salem State Collaborative. Um, I see in your work, your workshop offerings, I was just tallying off uh, some of the, I think some of the, the current, I feel like the current work being done in social emotional the SEL program, and we have social emotional learning through team building, the impact of trauma on learning. Um, I see, you know, this for me, it's uh, you guys are evolving with best practice. I think you guys are paying attention. I, I appreciate that. I think when you're locating present, pr uh, presenters and you're saying that you're getting it, when, when you say you're, uh, quote for quote, um, high quality for a low cost, I appreciate that. That's very important, like especially when you, you know, we, we are trying to, you know, we're trying to expose our professional, our PD, you know, expansion in a way where we can afford it. Um, it's, I got a kind of a question as well for the, the membership. Um, part of the, the grant opportunities, could you expand more about that? Like, what, what does that entail in terms of grant opportunity? What are some opportunities that you guys could provide a district like Lynn. No, no. What we're, is that? The, the grant Excuse opportunities me, is that we're, we're seeking grants from different companies, and um, so these are their opportunities that they could help us out and sponsor a program. Okay. Yes. Thank you. It's not us. Yeah, I just wanted to clear that up. Thank you. Yes. yes. Attorney Nicholson. Thank you. Uh, thank you for, for coming tonight and for the presentation. Um, I think one of the, the questions I had is it, it sounds like um, we, the, the fee is based on the, the number of students, uh, you know, and Lynn gets a discount, but the, the, the services, uh, these workshops, but the fee is uh, the same regardless of how many people actually go to the workshops. Um, would, would you, have you contemplated or would you be willing to contemplate a fee structure where the, a district would pay based on uh, how many teachers go and take advantage of the workshop. We need to, in order to make this financially work, we need to be guaranteed in the beginning of the year mm -hmm. funding 
that uh, supports this. You know, our total uh, membership fee that comes in is one hundred and ten thousand, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars this year uh, from all the member districts, and so to leave it wide open, I, it, to be able, to, you know, I know under that one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, the workshops that will run, I'll bring in about thirty to forty thousand dollars in fees um, um, from participants, which ends up covering the $80,000, uh, close to $80,000 that went to presenters and our two salaries. So um, that variable just wouldn't work for us. I mean, even if you, you could structure where some part of it is fixed and some part of it's variable. I haven't raised that fee in since eight, my 15 years as, as the director, um, it's as low as we can go. I could, I, we could start off at the 80 cents plus your number of participants, but you know, the 80, 80 cents is really the, the low point that we could go at. Ms. Gately? Um, <clears throat> you said that some teachers took it, took the courses, even though we're not in the collaborative. And I was wondering how much they had to pay to take your course. I actually, uh, even today, there were two, three Lynn teachers that were there. Uh, I charged them the basic member rate. So rather Which than the is? $80 for the day, they only paid 25 Okay. Yeah. But how much would the course be? If they did not take the, the Like class, if they're not in this at all and they just been, decide to sign up. It would have been the $80 up. today. Okay. It's only $80. That's pretty darn cheap. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at all the Lynn teachers. Are all of these Lynn teachers? Yes. And I see on um, Dr. Topweiler, are you on this list? Am I? Yes. You took an <laughs> SEI 15 hours <laughs> online. Oh, oh yeah. there was a <laughs> SEI class that I registered for. Oh, you didn't uh, take it? But then I got hired. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where I'm sitting right now. And like, <laughs> some, as I said, so, you know, like that we had pointed out, we got rid of most so, of the ones that didn't attend. But that raises a question, though. If I'm on there and I didn't take the course, I thought these were people who took the that course. We cleaned up as much as we could. We did not get rid of everybody that was oh, that was okay. capable. And okay. so, so like, we used to average 300 and something. That's why it's down to about 220. So okay. anybody who sent an email saying they were out, they were dropped from the class. Okay. Yeah. Okay, can I continue? And so, sure. Dr. Tutwiler, here you are. You promised you'd take one of these courses, but so now you're <laughs> that still was a year on the ago, hook. Now, yep, and I did now not, you're going to take that but course. But I, I, I do want to just not beat a dead horse. That is concerning about the veracity of the names on the list. If I'm on there and I didn't take it, yep. and you're presenting that these are people who took, you, no, you fixed the I system right, were, and you were able to. There were, there were names that we cleared off. Okay. That, that you did. Uh, yeah. But it's hard to get so rid of everybody that does not. Understood. Show up. Fair enough. So I want to speak to the fact that I am, I am a premium member at the place where I work part-time. And um, I took um, a wonderful course on um, Google Tools for the SE, SEI. SEI course with uh, Rochelle. Rochelle, Rochelle um, Cooper, who is also a MassQ presenter. Yes, and it was excellent. I want the committee to know it was an excellent course, and I plan on taking the um, the one about uh, for disabilities. Oh, her, it her meets the line. needs for my recertification. So I, I can't thank you enough for coming here and, and going over this so that people can see on the committee that was my whole purpose of what it is that you offer because I was not I botched it I wasn't doing a very good job so I just want my whole committee here to see what is actually offered to teachers that cannot for whatever reason make it to you know our PDP you know classes and want to take other classes somewhere a course somewhere and they don't have to pay huge costs to a college how much does a college course cost now per credit it could be 1500 or or more but these aren't college, it's not yeah. equivalent. that's for graduate credits right. which graduate is a, credits. a different different thing but even for pdps it's a lot what i am willing to do mr nicholson is for next year for a year, I will give Lynn the same rates that they had, or the same program, which is actually a premium plus. 
to $7,500 next year. So it drops the fee down by $2,500. But I'll do it for the year. And if I could work with Dr. Tutwiler and uh, Ms. Powers on um, sort of addressing some of the things that I think Kathy had mentioned um, and encouraging it, we will not be able to eliminate every no-show from Lynn. And, and that's there's a lot of paperwork involved here with only sure. two of us. Um, sure. But there can be a better accounting on on Lynn participation. Um, but that's an offer I can make. Okay. But I would make it for the coming year and see how it goes, and then hopefully we can go back to the original 10000 Is that the $7,500 plus the 1000 Nope. It'll be $7,500. So it's 50 cents per student, premium plus. Okay. okay. Thank you. Premium plus? Premium plus. The Lynn teachers will not have to pay a penny. Are there any other questions at the table? Yes, Attorney Nicholson. Um, one of the other things we talked about last time was the a, um, a program for students to visit uh, Salem State Science. Wise. Wise. Living yeah. Science and Engineering. That would include you would be back as a wise a wise school. And you, your, your junior highs would allow the, the students to come again. And how many students is that for? Tim runs the wise program. All schools, all school systems are at it. We'd love to have more, but we get close to 500 new schools a year. Place is packed. And can I input for some? Yes, Ms. The, the women in science, when I, I was teaching uh, middle school not too long ago, 2013, we would have a bus, Mr. Nicholson, and we would go, they'd pick us up at Pickering, we'd go over to Breed, then we'd go over to Thurgood Marshall, and we would take all these girls over to Salem State, and they would meet with professors from Salem State, and they would do different activities. They could choose if they wanted to measure DNA, if they wanted to do this. It was a wonderful program that they appreciated and they enjoyed and they worked hard because they got chosen to go to that program and they did not get chosen for the MIT one. Uh, d does that not, sorry, Donna? That's okay. Yes, attorney. Um, does that not include faculty or the discovery? D now that we have the discovery, would it include those programs too? Yes. With the MIT? No, for, for the wise. Yeah. When they say middle schools, isn't faculty still considered a middle school? And now it's tech is school. technically? Yeah. But the number of students, I mean, I, I would yes, hope that they okay. would be uh, included. But okay. uh, the number of middle school students there, I, there's probably that 10. That would be up to death. It's very small. Well, not, not tech, no. It's gonna be but, three, but the three Discovery Academy, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. sure. But it will not. Do I have any other questions down the road here? Uh, thank you for the presentation. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Unfinished business. There's nothing under unfinished business, <laughs> I'm assuming. Under new business, field trip request for LVTI to Southern Maine Community College on June 25th, 2019. I make a motion. Um, can I just ask a question? Sure. Uh, is this the one that we got an email on? Okay. Um, I make a motion to approve the LVTI to Southern Maine Community College that took place on June 25th, 2019. Second. Second. Roll call, Nancy. Ms. Castellanos? Yes. Ms. Capola? Yes. Mr. Ford, absent. Ms. Gailey? Yes. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Mr. Satterwhite? Yes. Mayor Gitt? Okay. And um, B has been removed. Oh. It has? Yes. It's been removed by um, Mr. McHugh. Do you mean to Budget mean to transfer to health insurance agreement. Is yeah. that correct? I'm all set. It's all set. He doesn't need a budget transfer. Okay. okay. Okay, and then um, under C, vote to proceed with the MASC to update the policy manual. Yes, Attorney Nicholson. Thank you. So uh, as you know, we've talked about this at a few different meetings now. Uh, the, uh, this would be to uh, hire the Mass Association of School Committee to uh, update our policies working with us. Uh, we got a presentation at the last meeting from 
MASC about the service, and I, and I had an opportunity to ask and answer questions. Um, so unless anyone had other sort of thoughts or questions tonight, I'd like to make a motion for us to, to hire the MASC to update our policy. I'll second right. it. Um, oh. I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to um, uh, reiterate to, to the committee. Um, I have in my office the old policy <laughs> Uh, of the not the old policy the current policy that was from 1970s um, and every time I look at it, it, it I'm, it's dreadful it, it, it's 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 we need this and um, I'm, I'm happy that uh, there was a solution to our problem and um, it's affordable and um, uh, one thing that I did want to see is are we are we going to need to break it up over three years or is it something that we can pay for in one swoop is that something that we need to talk about We have the option to discuss that with him if, once you move forward. We'll have that discussion. It's, okay. If we can pay it out, they offered the three-year payment, you know, we'd go with that method, or we can pay it okay. all at once. Okay. Thank you. No further questions from me? Yes, what Mr. Castellanos. Does that include, I, I remember, if I recall, we're going to host it, so we're going to go at the higher... The I don't think we went with that one. That, so which one? It's going to be up to you. I'm not sure exactly. You kind of talked about it, and I'm not sure if we we're going to host it or we we're just going to get the hard copy at this point. So whatever you... Whatever you want, we will move forward with them on that. I mean, I would suggest uh, editing the policies and then deciding if we want to host it. Um, Is there a discount if we did everything at once, I think? There was a discount. I believe there was. If you, when you initially sign up, there was a discount if you wanted them to host it. Like a one, you know, other than that, you could still do it. It wasn't, either way, it wasn't a substantial amount of money. I, mean, I, I, I think... Getting it done is probably the most important thing, you know, versus it, we, it would only be the decision of the committee as an annual cost, which would have to be in the budget for the hosting. I don't have the doll in front of my member. She gave it to us that meaning. If you wanted it, then we just bought budgeting for it every year because really you wouldn't be probably it'll take almost this school year coming, I imagine, to get through all the edits and everything else. So you probably wouldn't even have to incur that hosting cost until next year's budget if you wanted to, you know, tell her we're going to do that at this point. And it's slightly over a thousand, I think, a year for the hosting. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's a, it's a, attractive option. I just, I wonder if there's, if there's, if we're doing something else on that website and and we wanted to have our own system, then and it didn't sort of mesh. Uh, taking that decision now without talking to our web people would be would be my issue, my issue with that. Um, and I have a feeling that if we really talk to MSC about it, they might be willing to to let us select a package if that's what we end up doing. Um, Anyway, so what's the motion then? The motion would be to hire them for the policy manual update, and that was second. Yes. Okay. Is there any other discussion at the table? Roll call, please. Ms. Cassiano. Yes. Ms. Capola. Yes. Ms. Ford absent. Ms. Gailey. Yes. Ms. Nicholson. Yes. Mr. Sadaway. Yes. And Mayor McGee absent. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda is vote to approve the FY20 budget. It's, do we do a motion first and then have discussion? Somebody would like to make a motion and then second it? Uh, make a motion to approve the fiscal year 2020 budget. Yes. Second. Okay. Discussion, please. Yes. Attorney Sir. Um, Dr. Tutwiler, uh we had two uh, means of discussions. One was uh, when we were doing the postings in our subcommittee, and um, we talked about uh, a clerk's position and you know, when you look at the populations of each school and the need of the other schools you know I kind of feel for um, what Don is saying mm -hmm. in addition to that we just had someone come in and reduce the price to a product that I, I believe is a substantial reduction uh, for something mm -hmm. that could benefit our teachers if if we do it right mm -hmm. um, what are your um, responses to, uh, to those or what are your thoughts with regards to that um we can start with at least the the position i know you're going to probably reiterate yourself with with the building being the best purview is the principal i i said that only to underscore um that it wasn't a decision that was made without thought um and consideration around the operation of the building um 
But, you know, if you and, – and being new with this, if, if, if the wish of the committee is to restore that position, there are TBDs. I, I assume that I would just take one of those TBDs out and restore – um, the clerical position at that school. Okay. Uh, relative to the other uh, question, um, in our last meeting on the 13th, I committed to um, having another discussion, taking another look. Um, I stand by that commitment. You haven't done that yet. It's, uh, I know it's only been a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, do I make that motion for the restoring of the position now? Um, yeah, is it in a motion form or just in? Motion form to increase the line item. The line item. Position. Okay. You have to take it from another motion. line item. We're in the middle of a motion. You have to reduce another line item. Line item. Okay. Balance the budget. You, you, I don't have my book with me. Okay. okay. I do. Okay. Perhaps you'll get a recommendation from Mr. McHugh. Yeah. Mr. McHugh. Do you have yes. a recommendation for us? Yes. Where we can was take only, it from? It was only to remove uh, the funds needed from the superintendent's uh, to be determined line to the Breed Middle School uh, clerical line. And I'm trying to get, want the exact dollars. And give me one second. Does he need that? The exact dollar amount. Or can it just be? Did you hear that, Attorney? I did. Is that a white? Yep. So um, I make a, a motion to restore. Yeah. Are we in the middle of a motion? Yes. Want me to repeat it? To approve the FY20 budget. We've already we've already done that, but within this, we're. No, no they haven't. That, that's that's no, motion on the floor. Yeah, discussion. this is a, this is a sub. So, so just. We're so. only in discussion. Okay. And, and, and we're also going to um, make a correction to the motion. The original so motion at some point. Uh, oh, I just had a question on before. Oh, okay. a correction on the motion. Oh, yeah, we can do that. We can. I mean, so the the motion is going to read to accept the fiscal year twenty school budget in the amount of. You got it. 100. Yeah. yeah. One hundred and fifty nine million <laughs> three hundred thousand. Okay. So the, the most the next motion would be to uh, reduce the superintendents to be determined uh, positions by the amount of fifty nine thousand seven ninety four and restore that to the Breed Middle School clerical line. Jarrett has on. I'm going to make a motion to amend my original motion on the table. <laughs> okay. We'll amend the line item of the proposed budget. Yeah. In the okay. manner that Mr. McHugh. Uh, yeah, and, I, and I'd like to ask you a question about that before we. Uh, then that, that's. Okay, we ha have to amend the Attorney original. Attorney Satterman's motion. Right? Whatever the. Whoever made the motion to accept the budget, that motion has to be amended by okay. changing that line item. Okay. But that would have to pass first before we amend it. Amendment first, then the right. Right. Okay. So no vote until we amend anything we're amending. What are you going to do? <laughs> okay. So I, on the on the the, bleak, the breed clerical position, I um, I'd like to hear. I, I, I think that it's it's good that we have these TBDs because we don't know what's going to happen over the summer with enrollment um, and students changing uh, buildings or it increases enrollment and it gives us some flexibility for those for those student facing roles. Um, you know, we think about class sizes <coughs> and, and unpredictability. I I absolutely have uh, a lot of uh, sympathy for the for the clerks 
who are left with, uh, who anticipate being left with more work than is, is reasonable and fair in, 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 in breed. Um, I understand the administration's point of view that, you know, the, the principal has asked for this um, and, and it's their professional opinion. I think we, I would like to hear, I, I, I think that I understand that that's the, the principal's role is to plan their building um, and our role is to, to understand that and to, and to ultimately approve it. So I'd like, if, if, it, if there's more available, I'd like to hear more what the, the principal's rationale was for not needing a clerk beyond the fact that that was what the principal decided. So it, it, the recommendation came from a standpoint of understanding the workflow in, the main, in that office um, and um, feeling confident that um, the office could be managed uh, appropriately with um, yeah, sustaining that cut. And that came as part of a proposal um, wherein there was um, uh, prioritizing um, other needs within the building. So to put it sort of plainly, um, I think that we can manage in this space with this number of full-time equivalents. So I'm willing to give something up because I feel that there's a stronger need in my building for these full-time equivalents. Which are what? Yeah. Sorry. So that was the sped, uh, special education, science, no, excuse me, special education, math, and thank you, and ELA uh, department chairs, where there was, you know, content expertise, direct service to students through instruction, um, support, content support for teachers in the classroom, um, and not something that, I, I don't know if it's ever been there, but at least not in, in recent memory, um, a structure um, in the middle schools in the city. Okay. Thank you. I mean, I, my, 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 my inclination would be to, be, rec we, we don't know yet what, the, what that it's going to look like when there are department heads. It's going to take some administrative burden off the front office, presumably, um, if, they're, if they're adding some administrative time I you know I think it's important to re to remember here that in the please correct me if I'm wrong but we're not the, the, the clerk is going to still be employed with the Lynn public schools it just n wouldn't be at breed that's correct yeah. yeah yes Ms. Gately so let me get this right so with those positions coming on they're gonna be doing clerical work no no. no, so that's what I didn't think. So that's where I'm trying to understand this because they're losing one. What I don't want to happen is next fall to be told afterwards, say, hey, we need a clerical position, and then we have to throw it in. Right. That's all. So in my initial explanation, I said that there's an understanding of the workflow in that office and a belief that um, the staffing um, less one um, can handle that workflow. Uh, what Attorney Nicholas, Nicholson was suggesting, which I don't think is untrue, th there might be additional administrative tasks or responsibilities um, that are alleviated by having additional administrative capacity in the building. If I can, that, but that is not part of the initial rationale. I just want to be clear. If I can just chime in, um, I, I understand that uh, the workflow of the of the department is 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 important to know and we've been reached at least i've been uh, I, all three of them reached out to me and and, and told me that the, the work is there and, and that it's going to be uh, of detriment to the department if they're doing the work it's kind of hard not to listen to what they're saying um and i i appreciate what you said dr tutwiler uh, when you said um it can come from this I line to to this line because again it's 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 going to impact the school it's going to impact uh, uh the work in that school and in, in, in that's not an issue um, but again when we spoke last year you know I'm all about the uh, equity you know not everyone needs to be equal but this job is, is a very important job these are the, the people that kids see when they go to the office every morning um, and there's work that needs to be done um, and I believe that it's a it's a it's a, an important position uh, to keep that's okay. that's where I stand okay. <coughs> 
Yes. Attorney Nicholson. Thank you. Um, I th it's, do we? It, can you remind me how many um, TBDs we had last year, and whether we would still be covered for that? Right. I think I entered the year, and Mr. McHugh will have to keep me honest with two. So we, so you would still have you out of three this time. Uh, that change. Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay. Is that correct, Mr. McHugh? I'm checking. Because we're only taking a certain amount of money from it, fifty nine thousand. That's correct. You're not taking. So it's not going to be a total position. Okay. Leftover would stay available in the line. There's four currently in this year's budget, so. And there was two last time. There's probably, there's only a few last year because we had a tight budget last year. To be clear, however, uh, as Attorney Nicholson pointed out, I mean, you, you districts need that flexibility to bring on additional teachers. That, who knows what the summer holds in terms of registrations. Um, and as was the case this year, um, I don't recall if we necessarily need to put an, an additional teacher on, but we did put a social worker on. Uh, immediately with one of those TBDs. Actually, I think one was a therapist and one was a social worker, if I recall correctly. So we have that flexibility, and quite frankly, that was my mindset going into next year with those four TBDs. Classroom first, and if there's no need there, then I'm looking at social and emotional support. And you've already created 30 new positions that are in this budget, right? Uh, total? There was a 60. 60. 60. Yeah. And it's in the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Only because I don't know where Attorney Nicholson was going with this, but um, Breed, as of May 1st, had 1,425 students, and Marshall had 1,350. So even if we lost students, what is the amount that we're we're going to be losing? That's, you know. Yeah, when I was talking about enrollment, I just meant if, if we had like particular classes that were high, and therefore you wanted to put teachers there, and like, in, in, in not necessarily in the middle schools, but anywhere in the district. Yeah, and um, as far as um, explaining the difference, if what would be the difference in paperwork between Marshall and Bree? Because you're, what you're stating is there'd be a difference in maybe what they have to do at Marshall compared to what you have to do at Breed. Yeah. I can't imagine it, but I'd like to hear what it is. I, I can't speak intelligently about um, the inner workings of the, the two offices. I, I rely on the principals to tell me what they need uh, and to propose or present a budget based yeah, on. I understand. And, so, and I said before, yeah. I'm, I'm not opposed to having her have that support. Mm -hmm. I think it was department heads That's she correct. was asking That's for. Correct. So I, I'm not opposed to that. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that I don't think the cutting the clerical. I mean, I, I respect I'm not that. opposed to it, and that's it. I mean, I I don't even know where I got this, but I have the three different clerks, and what they all do different things, mm -hmm. you know, in the school. So it's not like um, so. In other words, if if one clerk is gone, then the duties of the third clerk gets distributed. But with all due respect, I mean, I, I don't know what's on that list. I don't know how much yeah. time each one of those mm -hmm. tasks uh, requires. One of them might take five minutes. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I've not seen the list. Um, you all have the latitude to move one TBD to that position, and I respect that if that's okay. the wish. Yes. Escape me. As as Mrs. Capola was talking, I flipped over to um, Thurgood Marshall, which is about the same size, that did add those two new department heads, and they still have three clerks. So it's like it's not that consistent, and Pickering has two. When I look at the clerk numbers, it's like I would think that Breed would have the same amount of work for a clerical as, as Thurgood Marshall. Um, Okay. And I think Dr. Tutwar has come to. Yeah, <laughs> he's, I mean, go, you can make four different ways. <laughs> you know what I mean? I so I think it's. I'm trying to support yeah. you, but. It's. And, you know, obviously, um, we like to go into these things um, without any surprises and 
you know, as much as a, as a team as possible, and sometimes we're not always going to see eye to eye. But um, I, I believe Jarrett has to correct the original um, motion for the budget, and then we can start doing these things. But I think I, I think I did that, but w there was a motion to amend the original motion to accept the fiscal year 2020 school budget in the amount of 159 million three hundred thousand. And then um, Kevin had uh, referenced what we need to do yes. to reinstate the clerical position in Breed, and that's to remove from the superintendent's salary uh, TBD line 59,794 to the Breed clerical salary line. And, and that's the motion that, that I'm putting forward to the committee. But I just missed that. And it needs to be a second. Second. I missed. I'll give it to you. Okay. Ms. Cassius? Excuse me. Yes. Ms. Cavola? Yes. Mr. Ford? Absent. Ms. Gately? Yes. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Sadaway? Yes. Mayor Absent. Is there, yes, Ms. Gate. Okay, so I would like to ask Dr. Tubweiler if he would restore the Salem State Collaborative for the amount of 7,500 into our budget this year. That's out of order. What? I'm sorry, attorney, I can't hear you. That would be out of order because the, that professional development is solely within the province of the superintendent of schools. Mm -hmm. If the motion is to recommend yeah. the superintendent that he do that, that would be in order. Okay, that's but basically to, uh, to what mandate a change. <laughs> I'm it's not. managerial prerogative. Okay. Well, I would like to um, ask you if you would want to. I've talked to you about this several times, anyway. So if you would restore that, I I would appreciate that. But that's up to you. We've talked about this before, and I'm not going to put it to a motion, but it's just something that. Um, I think would be good for our staff. Yes. I, I will uphold my commitment and I will reach out to Mr. Kearns and we'll sit down and have a conversation. And then will you get back oh, to yeah. me? It's fine. I'll get back to everybody. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> good, good, right? Okay. Is there anything else in the budget that you have concerns with or questions on? Because pretty much when we finish here and we vote on that budget, we never have a moment to speak on it again or do anything with it. <laughs> so, yes, Mr. Castellanos. So, so I know we, um, we just, you know, we reviewed the, the positions from the personnel subcommittee. It's, you know, I, I, I did my due diligence. I, I appreciate the, the hard work that was put into that, all, all positions. Um, it's a lot of money on the table. Um, really big decisions that have to be made. Um, obviously, you know, there's, there's a lot of need in the district. Um, and, and with your, you know, the, the leadership that you guys have as a, as a team, and I appreciate uh, all the efforts being made. Um, it, it's just one of those positions, um, uh, and I'll do for, for Kevin, I respect. Uh, I definitely respect the position that, you know, was brought to the table. And, you know, for me, I just want to add there is an importance for that position. I understand there's a, there's a need. Um, it just, when I look at $75,000, um, I, I see other ways to utilize that for the year. Um, and I really, you know, I, would, I wouldn't be opposed. Um, I would like to just add that to all those positions, the, well, A, B, C, those all have, you know, grant, grant, you know, right, grant writing responsibilities and mechanisms in those those job descriptions. Uh, those are returns. I see those as, as pretty solid investments. Brian, where are you looking at in the budget? Um, excuse me. I'm just I'm just saying the positions that we're adding. Oh, to. Okay. Um, excuse me. It's, it's within the within. Um, I'm talking about the the position that we proposed and that we're going to add on. I just wanted to say just just in terms of the, the return and. We, you know, for 10 years, Kevin, you did a pretty regret, uh, phenomenal job, you know, and I see the work that you've done. Um, but I just, you know, again, we're low in, you know, again, going back to, I'm going to say, like I said last week, um, social workers, crossing guards, teacher raises, paras. I can go in many different ways to look at $75,000 to be spent 
um, rather, and, and also that clerical job. Um, so I just want to uh, put that on the record, um, and, and I will, um, you know, I will support it because I believe that you guys did your due diligence. I, I, I understand that, but I also would like to, you know, bring that out to the light that we do um, the next, you know, few years that, that those positions, you know, and I and I heard social work is in the. I see I see the the efforts being made, but. Um, that's a lot of money that I could see could be spent in other directions. Um, also, the, the $7,500 collaborative, I think that's a great investment. Um, I, th I believe there's many different ways to, to think outside the box to create funds. Um, and hopefully, um, Kevin has, uh, with this position, if um, we move forward, that uh, he continues his excellent work, because I agree with Michael. I think when you have that time to focus on um, the issues and concerns in the district, you do a really good job. Um, as well, it's very, very, very well appreciated. And uh, there's nothing, you know, nothing against you. I just, the way I look at that $75,000 line item, I could look at it being spent on, on, on public safety. And I know our uh, law enforcement officials, I know that's their budget. But again, I'm not going to stop talking about crossing guards because I think that's a high need. Um, and I get to see it on a daily basis, um, uh, the need. And I appreciate it. That's just my, uh, my reflection on that. Donna? Yes, attorney. Um, and those T, uh, TBDs, when do you typically fill those? And if you see that there's no need um, outside of a, so, a social worker at some of our schools, I would be hopeful that that would be a position that we would fill. Yeah, so um, typically, um, I, I, well, I could say historically, at least since I've been here as a deputy superintendent, much of the summer is spent um, watching um, registrations. Um, and, um, you know, we work closely with um, Dave Hegan, and we're, we're watching elementary class sizes. We're watching the enrollment at the, uh, the secondary schools. If there's a need to open a new classroom, you know, K to 5, or um, op you know, hire another, an additional content area teacher at a secondary level, we'll use one of those TBDs. That, that would be the first priority for those. And then if we get to... Um, you know, Labor Day, September, mid-September, into October, and it appears that the dust is settling in terms of um, classrooms and we're stable, then I would use, and, and if there are remaining t TBDs, I would look at social worker, I would look at therapist, I would look at um, those those positions for that. I appreciate that because, uh, you know, the students have reached out to us and they – yeah. They let us know, and we understand their concerns. You even brought the figures to us, and, and we spoke about it. So um, if there's not one, uh, were you going to say something? After you're done. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, if, there, if there's not uh, one or two messages that you've heard from us today, um, is that we, we really do believe in direct uh, services sure. uh, to, to our kids and um, giving heed to the voices uh, from our students and our educators, it's, it's, it's important to us. So I appreciate that. So I just quickly, uh, I don't want to belabor this. Um, this is a process that spanned probably four months, I'd say. Um, and there were multiple iterations of the budget. I really, you know, when we thought the figure was a certain number, mm. I, I wish I could show you, and I, actually I can, um, the kinds of things that we were intending to do mm. with that uh, in terms of um, social workers, in terms of therapists. Um, there was a guidance, mm. guidance, and then there was, uh, you know, uh, Kathy White had mentioned earlier in terms of one person, and she's right. We have one technology integra integration specialist. Mm. Um, we wanted to expand on that to support teachers with you know, weaving technology into uh, their instruction in classrooms. They, you know, they need support uh, in, in that realm. But, you know, as that number shrinks, you, you really need to focus on what, what is core. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for reminding me of guidance. Okay. Is there any, anything else on the budget? If not, then roll call. The motion oh. is to. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> okay. Mr. Cassianos? Yes. Ms. Capola? Yes. Mr. Ford, absent. Ms. Gately? Yes. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Mr. Satterwhite? Yes. Mr. McGee, absent. 
We are down to ratification of votes taken in the personnel subcommittee. A motion. You, do you want to do it? Sure. Attorney Satterwhite. Right? Okay. Great. Um, there were four uh, votes taken in the uh, subcommittee. Uh, personnel subcommittee meeting in the committee of the whole um, on June 27, 2019. Um, previously, the postings were tabled on the June 20th, 2019 meeting. The first one was to uh, accept the assistant director of English learner education, and that was forwarded to the um, uh, committee of the whole. Um, do you want me to go through each one and then make? Yes, why don't we do them one at a time then? Okay, so I make a motion to. Um, Accept the assistant director of uh, English uh, learning education that was uh, approved in the personnel subcommittee. Second. Any discussion? All in. Uh, Ms. Cassianos? Yes. Ms. Capola? Yes. Ms. Ford absent. Ms. Gailey? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Satterway? Yes. Mayor McGee absent. Uh, in the subcommittee, we made a motion to um, accept the posting for the as Assistant Director of Social um, Emotional Learning. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Cassianos? Yes. Ms. Coppola? Yes. Ms. Ford absent. Ms. Gately? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Satterway? Yes. Mayor McGee absent. Uh, there was a, a motion to uh, approve the program specialist for special education out of district with the change to um, paragraph one of performance responsibilities to include coordinate and monitor. Second. Okay. I was waiting for, oh. to see. I'm speaking very slowly. Ms. Cassianos? Yes. Ms. Capola? Yes. Ms. Ford absent. Ms. Gately? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Satterwhite? Yes. Mayor McGee absent. Uh, there was also a motion to bring to the full committee uh, a position in a job posting for payroll account payable manager. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Cassianos? Yes. Ms. Capola? Yes. Ms. Ford absent. Ms. Gately? No. No. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Yes. Mr. Sadway? Yes. Yes. Mayor McGee absent. Um, move on to the signing of a contract for the spe a school business administrator as approved on June 13, 2019. Does that have to be in the form of a motion? I make a motion to sign the contract for school business administrator as approved on June 13, 2019. Second. Um, roll call, please. Ms. Cassianos? Yes. Ms. Coppola? Yes. Ms. Ford absent. Ms. Gately? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Sadaway? Yes. Mayor McGee absent. Okay, we have five copies that need to be signed, and I'll pass them down. <coughs> and the committee signed them. Do you, um, <coughs> you have to wait? Or can you go into the? Yes. Wait. wait. Okay. <laughs> all day. It's like unlimited. I, I, all day. All day. Black. Well, you st I gotta, I gotta stash. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I see you said I got the same thing. Twenty five. Still got coffee. I, I could drink a cup and go to bed. Go in back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay. Under communications and information, superintendent's report. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, as this is the last superintendent's report of the 2018-19 school year, uh, I, thought, I thought it prudent first to acknowledge the substance of our work together this year. Um, I learned a ton. On Tuesday, you received a document that formally captures what I learned through my uh, entry activities. The document is meant to be accessible not only to you, but also to the community. I will post it on the LPS website after this meeting. I don't think you'll find anything in this document surprising. Much of what I learned through my entry activities we've been discussing formally in this space over the course of the school year. It seemed prudent, uh, however, to report out on the activities and where the outcomes land in terms of the work uh, and our plans going forward. Clearly laid out in the, in the report is the plan going forward. You can expect a formal presentation on the strategic plan in the fall. This summer's work involves the digging into strategic initiatives designed to help us meet the strategic objectives in the plan. We need to, de to develop action plans for each. I'm excited about the work ahead and I look forward to presenting more formally how it is we intend to go about achieving the strategic objectives in the early fall. Also in your packets um, that we had put in there this evening um, is a report on the common items on the teacher survey we employed this year. In the October 25th, 2018 meeting, I informed you of our intent to formally gather feedback from teachers at, at each school via survey. As was communicated that evening, we worked with principals to develop a survey that offered an opportunity to claim several benefits, chief among which was providing teachers with a voice and developing an understanding of how staff is experiencing their professional home. What you have is a collection of the common Likert scale items. Some principals added additional items to gather feedback on initiatives or elements specific to their school. To norm the process, principals shared the results of their survey with their staff, much in the fashion that I'm sharing with you, and discussed a response, a, a response approach. This was a first go at a uniform feedback approach in the schools. We will reflect both on the process and the outcomes that you have and use both as tools for improvement going forward. June 18th marked the end of year two with the uniform pilot at Callahan and Aborn. A formal request has come forward seeking a, a report. What I have is hardly that, uh, a report, but I can offer you uh, a bit of an update. The program continues in both schools, but in my humble opinion, falls short of fidelity to the ideal. Uniforms in schools are part of the cultural fabric, the makeup, the who, who are we element in school cultures. While I believe the effort has been valiant, I don't think that the pilot has risen to the level of being part and parcel of the school culture at either school. This could be the case due to the optional feature in the pilot. Not every student is required to wear the uniform. In preparation for this evening, I reviewed the par parent survey data collected in the 2016-17 school year. There was strong support for the pilot at that time. Beyond that, we have anecdotal fee feedback from the previous principals uh, in school year 17-18, which was also positive. By way of empirical data, I pulled uh, attendance and discipline data from both schools over the past three years. You have a copy of this. I lost my place. Um, okay, okay, you have a copy of the, the data. Uh, I acknowledge that there are a number of factors that would influence both in a given year, attendance and uh, discipline, but at a high level, there does not appear to be much of a difference in attendance over the identified years. Um, there are diff differences in the discipline data, but it's negligible or not reflecting a trend. Both schools are under new leadership, and there was no survey done this year relative to the pilot. In the early fall, in addition to identifying specific criteria for success, which I think is missing, 
Uh, I would recommend serving students in grade five, the teachers, perhaps as part of their teacher survey, and parents next year to make a determination as to next steps. And I'm interested to hear your feedback on that, that thought. Uh, perhaps key in this process and everything I just talked about um, and what we do as in this organization uh, is learn. I learned a lot about the community. I learned a lot about our relationship. And I learned a lot about the role uh, of superintendent. I'm excited about the plans related to what was learned. The learning continues. I will continue to learn as a superintendent along with the rest of our community. In the course of that process, I will make mistakes. And I, it's part of the human condition, I think. When I make one, I'm man enough to acknowledge it and apologize in an effort to repair any harm. I made a mistake recently that calls for a formal apology. At our June 13th school committee meeting, there was an agenda item uh, presentation by the Lynn Community Health. Uh, while, I know, while I knew full well with the subject matter of the presentation, um, you did not. Given the nature of the subject matter, you deserve notice ahead of the meeting. One of our operating protocols that we all agreed to calls for no surprises. I did not behave in keeping with that agreement, and I apologize for that. I'll end uh, this last superintendent's report um, with what my favorite high school history teacher used to call congratsograms. I'd like to offer this coveted prize to the Breed All-Stars program which was recognized with a Pillar of Excellence Award from the Addiction Policy Forum in our nation's capital earlier this week. There's pictures on Twitter. Wonderful thing. Uh, congrats, O'Graham, to Jason McCush, who was named the National Skills USA Advisor of the Year. I need not go into detail. You see what he does both within the school and around the community um, with Skills USA. And then, and I, I tried ahead of time to get his name, so I didn't uh, butcher the pronunciation, but I think it's Nubi Reto, uh, the Lynn Tech teacher who recently received an yes. Emmy from the yeah. New England chapter. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Yep. New England chapter of the National Academy of Television uh, Arts and Sciences for a documentary that he created. Congrats to him. And my best to all for a relaxing summer. Question? Sure. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Yes. Okay. Um, what interests me uh, out of everything you said is the feedback from our faculty. Um, you know, they're in it, they're invested, they deal with our, our, our kids, they see things from the bottom to the top, and their feedback is important um, to you, I'm assuming, as well, to, to all of us. Um, were we not able to get this broken down by schools, or you did this intentionally to? I did that intentionally. Okay. Um, what bothers me is that, uh, on average, it's between 20 and 22 percent of the uh, faculty that were surveyed are dis disagree or are neutral with the majority of these um, uh, questions. And they, these are some uh, pressing questions. If they're getting the support that they need, if they feel like they're a part of the team, these are these are big things. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a large number. If if you don't, do you agree that 20 percent are? Well, if 20 percent are disagree or strongly disagree, that means 80% potentially are in the agree, strongly agree. So, I mean, so there's a couple of ways to look at these. Um, and what we've really tried to stress with the principles is, like, look for the opportunities to improve. Like, I, one, one, a person can walk away from this, you know, especially when you look at the visual and say, hey, we're doing pretty good. Look at all this strongly agree. And look how small, at least visually, the... I actually take it from neutral to, because neutral to me is, is a disagree. If you're not fully in agreement with something, um, then you're not, then you're disagreeing. We, that's, that's my okay. own personal thing. <laughs> yeah, we, we, can, we, can, we could, you know. Agree to disagree. On that. Yeah, <laughs> sure. We could be neutral about that together. Um, but, but, you know, we really wanted them to look at the opportunities to improve. And so, for example, if, you know, the, the one that I, all of these items are important, but uh, all the way down there at the bottom, the second to last around school culture, mm. um, when, I mean, and the numbers are relatively low, um, but when you look at the N, the number of people who 
I mean, that's, that's concerning to me that there's, you know, people who feel like there's the school culture is not positive. So. That, when I saw that, I thought instantly to the SEL presentation we had, which they addressed that part of what they're hoping to do is improve school culture. Right. And so um, the individual work of a principal, though, is to, is to dig into that and find out why, and even if it's a small number, to mm. find out why that small number of people perceive the school culture as not being... Mm being positive. So um, I did not break it out by school um, for lots of reasons. Um, one, I, I sort of want to be consistent with common practice when you're, you want to look at it from, from on high. And I worry about um, conclusions being drawn about individual schools that might not be accurate. If, um, but if it's you have that data and, sure. and, and you're going to use that data however you deem necessary. So as long as the data is broken down somewhere and someone's looking at it up. Uh, so I was going to ask you to go ahead, please. So Kim Powers and I, it, it, as part of our supervision with the schools that we supervise, we saw the results of the individual schools and had conversations with the principals about how are you going to um, share this? What, you know, what are you going to focus in on? What you're not seeing is there was a whole section of comments that teachers could put in that principals needed to tease through, look for trends, um, and that when they were sharing back the results, they would talk about what they noticed in, um, you know, what came out of trend data of reading those comments. Um, and all of the principals that did the surveys did that with their staff. Were there some principals that didn't do the survey? There was one that did not. Oh, I'm sorry. That's <laughs> you right. keep I am the chance, right? <laughs> Turning <We're> Nicholson, here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you for the report. Um, just uh, on the faculty survey, I think this is this is really helpful. Uh, it, it, it'll be helpful in, in, in the absolute responses, but I also think it's a, it's great to have a baseline yeah. now that we're um, starting talking, going through the strategic planning process, talking about values, because then we can see how things are moving over time. Yes. Um, so it, it, I, it can be hard to interpret the numbers the first time you do something like this, um, yeah. but I think that baseline will be really helpful. Sure. Um, and you know, this is something that I think it's, it's a tool, it's a management tool of, of, of many, um, and it's a great opportunity to have teachers uh, uh, give a direct line of feedback, and we, we all know how important that is. Um, and it's something I think uh, you had mentioned as, as we went through the, the process to, to, to decide which direction to go in for, for um, leadership in the district, and, and something I know my colleague, um, Ms. Gately, has, has, has mentioned over the years. And so I, it's really exciting to see if this comes to fruition and have this added this tool to our toolkit in the district. Um, just because you invited some feedback on the uniform point, yep. I just wanted to um, well, thank you for the update mm -hmm. yeah. and also mention that I thought all, everything you said about structuring a pilot makes a ton of sense in terms of you know, clearly defining what the goals are and how to measure that. Um, and you know, we had on the last committee an ad hoc uniform subcommittee. Yep. Um, Ms. Gailey was on as well and I think uh, you know, once you've had a chance to, to, to think about structuring the pilot and get whatever feedback that you'd like from that school, mm -hmm. it, it, it would probably be a good use of a subcommittee meeting to sure. to, um, to, to, to do that for the next mm -hmm. the next year. Thank you. Attorney Sadaway. Oh, I thought you had your hand up. Oh. <laughs> Miss Gately. <laughs> um, Dr. Tutwiler, we um, sat down and talked this week, and um, I went over the surveys with you, and I'm really glad that you did that, and I'm really, really glad that we had the results in front of me. But I just want to make sure that, you know, like, it, it's a tool for the principals to actually evaluate themselves to see how they're being perceived, and I, I hope that in the future, because we talked about one particular school, and I just don't want people in the classroom not to answer honestly. I want them to continue to answer honestly and to know that this is just for feedback to the principal to help them to become a better administrator. And that's the whole purpose of this. And I thank you for doing this. I just, we still, it's a work in progress, right? And we did have conversations with the principals, um, Ms. Powers and I, about, um, 
you might have had 80% that were in agreement or strongly agree, but that 20%, it's important. You don't know what you don't know, right? And so you have to acknowledge if something's not working fix that it. you want to find out how do we fix it. And so, um, you know, getting even more feedback from teachers in a non um, or in an anonymous way and giving them opportunities to share ways that it can be fixed is, is a positive step. I, I just was concerned because after the, the um, surveys went out and the teachers were getting the feedback, two teachers specifically told me right to my face that they will never answer a survey honestly again after what happened to them. So that's why I want the people out there to know that you need to continue to answer it honestly. And things. Yeah. this is the feedback that the principal needs. So mm -hmm. that's, why, that's why I brought that up. And thank you, Dr. Other, any other questions at the table? Oh, I, I, Mr. So, Kessler. No, sorry. Um, so just more of a, just a reflection on um, the materials that were presented. I appreciate the survey, um, the, the amount of challenges this district faces. Uh, urban school and, you know, when you, when you look at urban schools, we're faced with such tremendous adversity. It's imperative that leadership stays collaborative. Like I see, uh, as you just mentioned, like we're nobody's perfect. Uh, we all need to learn something one way or another. There's a need somewhere. Um, and, I, and when I reflect out as my experiences through um, my first year on the, as, as a school committee member, um, as you can see, all my colleagues are very passionate about Lynn Public Schools. I think a lot of us are very passionate about students' needs um, and the leadership involved with making these decisions. It's definitely something that has been challenging but very re rewarding. Um, I'm speaking on my behalf with my experiences with uh, when you bring to the table um, some of your goals and what your vision was and what our, I want to say our vision. Cause I, think, I think a lot of that was uh, in, in the time that we spent together, a lot of us really uh, got to work together and get to know each other. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think as a, as a superintendent, as a new uh, superintendent, uh, you did a, a, phenom a phenomenal job on stepping up to a district that um, definitely needed some change. Um, and then there's definitely there's moments where I got to um, hear stories of, of from from students and parents and teachers mm -hmm. that were in very strong support and very uh, positive. Um, Thank you. My experiences in the strategic planning uh, process was very eye-opening for me, um, as well as my experiences going to New York with the Lynn Teachers Union. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't I can't muster up how much respect I have for mm -hmm. the public educator. The people who are in our school system that really get it done. The people who don't get recognized every day uh, and the leadership, like you said, those principles from, from the whole operation, top, and do, top to bottom, um, it's, it's such a, a, a wonderful sight to see on graduation day when you get to see those faces and those families of first-generation mm -hmm. students uh, achieve those milestones because I believe uh, the work that we all do together, everyone here at this table, uh, we, we want the best for our students and we are going to keep working together and we are going to keep uh, pushing the district forward and we are going to be making tough decisions, but we're going to do it together. And I end with really the, uh, it's a Frank Warren quote. It's, um, it, was the, it, 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 it was the broken child that the world almost broke that grow, grows up to save it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I believe that. I believe a lot of us at the table have a lot to, uh, to provide our constituents, and um, we want to be able to do it without them, mm -hmm. and that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. um, we entrust you mm -hmm. and the leadership that you guys provide, and it's been really an honor to share that, uh, that, this platform with my colleagues, mm -hmm. and it's been really rewarding, and I look forward to uh, moving this district forward, and thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good job this year. Um, before we make a motion to adjourn, um, I, in the past I've asked about when people um, are leaving a district, mm -hmm. um, in particular resignations. Yeah. Um, exit. You know, an exit. Mm -hmm. Interview. Interview, yeah, sure. really. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. I noticed on the back of our sheets, three of them, we're in the special ed department, and one was a speech therapist. Mm -hmm. And those are really hard to come by. So, you know, we, we should really know why they're leaving. Mm -hmm. And still also give our retirees that opportunity to let us know <laughs> what they think's working and what, 
what they think maybe isn't working for us and or what what they could you know suggest that would make a difference agreed okay great i make a motion to adjourn great second second all in favor aye okay good job guys thank you all you're welcome thank you what a year huh